This video is sponsored by Unusual Horror. To see the fully uncut version of this video, head over to patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons. What's that like to live deliciously? <laughs> What's going on? My name is John Joe Lyons, and today I'm here to present to you my review for Necrophobia. Written and directed by Frank Van Gelleven and Edwin Visser, Necrophobia stars all of these lot. After the death of his wife, Mark falls deep in a big depression. He loses interest in living until he knows a beautiful woman which he starts dating. One night, while Mark is looking for the bathroom in her house, he discovers a strange dark basement. He will soon discover a terrible fact between his death wife and his new girl. Well, hello there, my lovely little chums. Welcome to that very special corner of YouTube where you get to watch a waste of flesh slowly deteriorate into the f***ing pud you see before you today. That's right, it's my birthday and I feel like absolute dog sh about it. To make myself feel better about the deafening tick. Tock. Tick. Tock. Tick. Tock. I've decided to cover a film where I've been promised people f dead bodies. I don't know why that makes me feel better. Could it be the idea that you are loved and will be loved well into decomposition? That human connection transcends life and death? That even the most grotesque and devoid of life can still find companionship in this bleak, awful world? Nah, I just like upsetting you. But before we get into all of that, I just want to remind you, you can see this video completely uncut and early at patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons for as little as $2 a month. Go ahead and support the creators that you love, unlike one certain Mohawkian that will remain nameless. Want to see the uncut videos and all the other bonus sh Go there now. And if you don't have $2 but still like the content, please click subscribe. It's free, it really helps, and I really appreciate it. But anyway, I'm in the mood to confront my mortality by way of necrophilia, so let's not waste any more time. Get ready to enjoy another John Joe Lyons-inspired confusing boner. This is necrophobia. The movie begins on the street when we cut inside to see this woman chilling in bed. With all the following clips of this woman being intercut with the opening credits. She closes her eyes then opens them again discovering she's now mostly buried in a grave. The grave digger then appears in this f***ing cool shot startling her before dropping into the grave and giving the woman her dinner. Shovel. <laughs> the mystery man then pulls the shovel out and beats the woman's f***ing head in. <gasps> okay, sweet. Consider me fully on board. Cut to this fella Mark running with his dog as in voiceover he complains about it making him sweat like a pig. Cut to his partner Rebecca chopping wood and then to Mark as he arrives home. He takes the dog in and the couple playfully banter when the man offers to make some coffee. Rebecca accepts but says she'll be right back as she needs to go to the store. We then cut between Mark doing the washing up and Rebecca's trip when her bag breaks and the groceries go all over the road. Which isn't that much of a problem is it? Just pick them up, go home and live the rest of your happy little life. truck just kissed Rebecca's forehead. Going at full speed. Is she okay? No! No, she is not okay! Good lord! When someone suffers head trauma so bad they start popping and locking on the floor, you know it's a serious issue. Either that or she's having one of the best orgasms of her life. Back with Mark, we see him cleaning up the mess in the kitchen and then hard cuts to him chilling at his partner's funeral. The rest of the people start to leave as Mark stays at the grave, unable to believe that all this happened so quickly. Soms grijpt het leven je bij de kloten. Dan kun je alleen maar slikken en doorgaan. Maar ik ben nog niet aan slikken toegekomen. Oh, you're ready, big boy. Trust me. Let Daddy John Joe make you feel all better. Mark then looks up and sees this woman, who then looks and sees the woman from the opening striding into the cemetery. I'm gonna call the first woman Bob because of her hair and the fact that I used to f a guy called Bob that looked just like her. The two start to argue as Mark looks down again before being approached by this man. I recently realized when I'm introducing characters whose names I don't know, I often refer to them as this. Well, I'm gonna try to reduce that. Slightly. Anyway, this 
calls Mark over, who joins before taking one last look at Hot Cemetery Woman. He goes to walk away, but again looks back, now concentrating on Bob before again turning and leaving. Cut to the Cemetery Woman approaching this building. There she meets her psychiatrist, who draws the curtains and starts hypnotizing her. I want that you Concentrate on the kogeltje. Now, show me the inside of your asshole. No? Okay, well, it was worth a shot. What the f do you want anyway? Now fully under, but for some reason not displaying the inside of her asshole, the doctor instructs her to go back to the room where it happened. Look at what's there. Kijk maar wat te zien is. Rustig blijven. Je hoeft niet bang te zijn. Wat zie je? Wat gebeurt er? As the woman is taking this trip, we start to see flashes of a man putting a mask on her face, a man in pain, the cemetery, and bodies hanging from chains. Given the brevity of the flashes, it's hard to discern exactly what's going on here, but at least we get this wonderful payoff at the end. Kijk goed. En laat het nu maar helemaal gebeuren. Damn, that was like a terror orgasm. Well done, doctor. Nurse, get them up. He tells her they could be satisfied but aren't there yet, then gives her her coat before stopping her and confirming she knows what she has to do. That was a little bit short for a session, wasn't it? I'm no expert, I've never been to therapy, even though I clearly need it so desperately, but... Is that the normal session length? Here's some past trauma, that'll be a hundred bucks. Cut to Mark's place where we find the doggo sleeping and Mark having a cigarette by the window. The dog leaves the room and Mark follows to find him looking out of another window, presumably waiting for his mummy to come back. But mummy's not coming back, is she? No, she's in the ground. Unless... Mark? Get the shovel? Hmm? Cut to some time later as Mark gives his dog to his mate from the cemetery. His mate tries to get him to come with, but it seems Mark is set on isolating himself from the world. In voiceover, he calls himself an asshole for sending the dog off, but says he'd rather that than neglecting him, which is pretty fair. Although what he doesn't know is his friend routinely f dogs. So now the dog has lost both his parents and is about to be f six ways from Sunday by his new carer. Like Woody Allen's kid. Mark then says goodbye and stares up at the sky when we cut to the cemetery to find the woman digging up Rebecca. As the woman dumps Rebecca on the table and nails her hands to it as all around the room we see multiple different dead bodies all smiling in their own very special ways. She then pops this mask and a on Rebecca and goes to town. I've got to say, I am in love with this film's aesthetic. It might just be a matter of taste, but we're 14 minutes in and I am having the best time. Cut back to Marks as he sleeps in bed. A shadow passes and he wakes up to see that somebody's been playing with a smoke machine outside. He gets up to take a closer look, then moves to another window where he sees this. I don't know why he's acting so surprised. It is a bird bath. Hey? Eh? Because... You, you get it. You get it. I trust you. I trust you. Rebecca. Mark then has a little cry and we cut to morning. Here we find our hero in bed and feeling like shit. He pulls himself out of the bed, wax on a shirt and then heads to the bathroom. Opening the medicine cabinet, he finds Rebecca's perfume, which he smells further, adding to his grief. I know what that's like, losing a loved one and in return that certain smell they had. The smell under Grandad's foreskin had a sharpness to it, almost citrusy. That's why everyone called him Lemon Mark then lathers himself up to shape when we get one of my favourite jump scares of all time. <laughs> going on here. The editor really loved that spin, didn't he? Link in the description for the 10 hour version. Mark then tries to carry on shaving, but is shaking too much, so instead just drops the razor. Cut to him chilling at the dinner table for a bit and being an all round miserable. He then goes to make a sandwich, but stops to consider unaliving himself. Unable to do that, he instead smashes up the kitchen and has another little cry. <laughs> Unfortunately, I lack the ability to experience human emotion like you do, so I'm not one to judge, but hasn't it been multiple days since Rebecca died? Like, more than one. Get over it. Cut to Mark at Rebecca's grave as he accepts he needs to move on. 
Nu heb ik geslikt en het wordt tijd om door te gaan. Zonder Rebecca en zonder lekker sterke koffie. Oh, oké. Okay. Cool. Movies don't usually take my advice so quickly. His task now is to find 4,000 things to fill the void. I don't know about you, but I'd fill a void full of nickels and sand. I don't know how to do callbacks. He stares at the woman who then appears behind him, then pops out again playing some sort of ghoulish game of hide and seek. With Mark not being about that sh he walks off when the woman appears next to him and confirms he lost his wife, then just walks off again. Yeah? In? Oh, sorry. Ik, ik wilde niet nieuwsgierig zijn. Mark catches up with her and asks if she knew Rebecca with her saying that she met her once. When she lesed off with her. Is lesed off still an acceptable term to use in today's society? It's not a negative term, it's merely another way to celebrate the smashing together of two fannies. Like that. Been a while since we've seen this, hasn't it? He then asks if she's lost anyone, to which she admits she did before asking if he wants to talk. Hmm, what's Bob up to? Cut to Mark as he puts it all together. His wife's dead, the dog's gone, and now he's got a date with a stranger. He decides to call a friend and they begin to chat as in voiceover, Mark says what he really wants to ask him is if he thinks it's normal to chase strange girls in a cemetery so soon after your wife dies. Yeah, that's fine, mate. The strange part is you leaving him alive at the end. Instead, he just chit-chats and wonders if he should put on some aftershave tomorrow, which I'm assuming is some sort of euphemism for gay sex. He tells the friend to keep his desk clear for the next few days and then asks about his dog before saying goodbye. Er zijn van die momenten waarop je je realiseert dat je jezelf echt diep in de nesten gaat werken. Dit is er een van. Cut to the psychiatrist says he confirms the woman is in love. He says that doesn't mean she can just stop treatment before demanding she look at him while he's talking. He then starts doing the abusive relationship shuffle trying to make her feel as if he's the only one who can or would help her. He then asks about her sister when we cut to Mark reading at home. There's a knock at the door and he answers finding Bob. Who's extremely cute by the way which is why I fell in love with him. Also she reveals her name to be Martha here but I'm gonna keep calling her Bob because it's my video and I miss him. <laughs> she says she came to warn him before refusing an invitation inside as there's no time. Bob says there's someone Mark should be careful with, someone who is a threat to him and his wife. Mark reminds her that his wife is dead as Bob pulls a picture out telling him that this threat is watching him. Mark then recognizes Bob from the cemetery and she says she was there because of Colette, the cemetery woman. She is dangerous. Having had enough of this, Mark tells her to leave, but Bob insists saying people are being murdered. I thought they were all dead already. The only thing getting murdered here is Colette's box, judging by the size of that dildo she strapped to Rebecca. Ah, there we go. Speaking full sentences, Bob, for f**k's sake. Mark finally slams the door on Bob, who says she'll be back tomorrow with proof as Mark reveals to us that he won't even be here tomorrow. Cut to Bob having a smoke in her car as she arrives at Colette's place. Bob watches her leave, then hits the accelerator as we cut to Colette driving. She notices the car chasing her, who pulls up alongside to reveal Bob, who tries to ram Colette off the road. In response, the cemetery woman pulls out a massive gun and shoots at her pursuer. The chase continues when Colette unloads on Bob, causing her to crash. <laughs> Cut to Bob waking up in Colette's f dungeon. She gets to her feet and takes a look at all of her handsome roommates before taking some pics for the w bank. She then leaves and this is a bit of a weird place to bring Bob, isn't it? Is Colette trying to get caught? Has she had her fill? Nah, Phil's still in the trunk. Ah, okay, never mind. Get her, Colette! Cut her up and use all the pieces to stuff your delicious sloppy holes. Bob continues to wonder as Colette jumps out and hits her in the face with the chainsaw, which somehow doesn't kill her. Instead, Bob pops right back up and runs screaming through the halls. That is until Colette catches her. <laughs> That 
was nice, but you lose points for not immediately cutting to Colette right in Bob's face. Moving on, I guess. Cut to the doctors as he offers Colette some coffee. We find out here that Colette wants to stop with all of her treatment, which of course the doctor isn't a fan of, saying everything that happened to her left deep marks. He tells her she's sick, that she needs help, and he's the only one that can give it to her. I have absolutely no help, and certainly not more than you. You have the death from too close to me. When David lost you. That was two years ago. I feel now prima. The doctor then tells Colette she went too far, causing her to call him an arsehole and try to storm out. He stops her and Colette reminds him that it was his idea, that he started it and he responds he started it and he'll finish it. Colette manages to escape so the doctor takes a seat and goes to spark a cigar. As he looks for a lighter, he opens the drawer exposing newspaper clippings about a psychiatrist, presumably him being convicted by disciplinary committee. The plot thickens. Much like your mother's bulbous bean. Cut to Mark chucking out all of Rebecca's perfumes before popping his shaver in the medicine cabinet and sighing. He's putting on his jacket when he hears a sound and goes back to the bathroom once again opening the cabinet. Cut to Mark arriving at Colette's and then to the couple finishing dinner. Colette offers Mark dessert, but he declines instead asking for a coffee the same way Rebecca liked it. This causes him to retreat inward, once again wondering why he said that as he hated Rebecca's nice and strong coffee. He then takes note of the situation he's put himself in, calling it not the ways of a fresh new widower. Moet hier weg. Koffie snel opdrinken en een of andere smoes bedenken. Mark then joins Colette in the kitchen, offering help before thanking her for the invitation and asking where the bathroom is. Even with the directions, he has some trouble finding it, looking around the halls and discovering a set of stairs heading all the way down. Like a dickhead, Mark decides to go and investigate, and when he gets to the bottom of the stairs, he is confronted with a familiar-looking blue hallway. Oh, uh, sorry. I think I'm going to rock. Toilet is down. Cut to the pair in the living room as Colette plays the violin. Mark then brings up Bob, asking if Colette knows her and says she came by his house last night. He said Bob was spiteful about her, but Colette isn't surprised, saying she's the kind of person who doesn't forgive easily. Apparently, Bob was in love with some bloke who loved Colette. She says the man died of a heart attack last year, and ever since, Bob has been on a crusade against her. Mark asks if this man is the one Colette visits at the cemetery, and she says yes before changing the subject. Ah uh, yes, moving on to my favourite subject. I wonder how Mark is about to do on his entrance exam. As they're starting to get to business, however, Colette flashes back to the day she lost her love. When Bob's bloke was about to bang her, but instead had a heart attack, Gerald's game in Colette. Sometime later, she was saved at what looks like the brink of death leading to her PTSD. Hey. What is that? Best orgasm ever. <laughs> Mark then gets off her and lights a cigarette as Colette lies still. He gives her the cigarette before lighting another one and saying he should probably go. Colette doesn't say anything, so he jumps in his car and gets the f out of there. At home, Mark pops his coat down and looks at a picture of Rebecca saying he knows. Cut to Mark chilling in a bath as we see flashes of Rebecca and Colette. We then see a shadow when Mark rips off the washcloth and goes to investigate. To Colette as she bangs Mark on her corpse f***ing table and then to him waking up on his own. He gets his clothes on then goes round the corner to find Colette bagging up another body. He then heads back the way he came and discovers Bob's body hanging. <laughs> oh, hello dear. Nice weather we're having. And I must say, that's a smashing blouse you have on. Mark is able to knock the chainsaw out of her hand and grabs her, demanding to know what the hell is going on here. No! I didn't even get to see the inside of her arsehole. Worst birthday ever. The doctor is about to take care of Mark when he yells wait, and the doctor does, saying he's not in a rush for some reason. We then get our explanation on just what in the actual f*** is going on here. It's all a 
niet wat uit de hand gelopen, vrees ik. He says it starts innocent enough, taking bodies to help Colette deal with her fear of death, but things took a turn after a confrontation between Nicolette and the deceased. Um, hold on. Who the f*** is Nicolette? Maar daar zal ik verder niet over uitweiden. Oh, okay, well f*** you then. Is Colette short for Nicolette? What the f*** is going on? He says no one was supposed to find out and raises his gun to Mark as he calls the doctor insane, catching a gun butt to the chops. The doctor then reveals Rebecca's corpse, causing Mark to push him down and take off running. He quickly gets lost, so turns back, somehow losing all agency in his escape. We get some more cat and mouse shenanigans when Mark turns a corner and spots the chainsaw laying there, just begging to be used. Like your mum. He tries to get the thing going as elsewhere, the doctor hears the noise and comes running. As the doctor gets to the room, we hear the chainsaw kick into gear, but when he enters, he finds it being held by one of the hanging corpses. That's when Mark appears behind him to drop his badass action movie one-liner. Who weet what to say over the dodo? Nee. Wat zeggen ze over de doden? Dat je ze met rust moet laten. Yes! No! Oof, that does not look good, mate. Did that take your dick and balls along with it too? Shame. Mark falls to the ground and in voiceover says sometimes life grabs you by the balls literally, then thanks God it's over. And that's when the lovely Colette, who looks very dead to me, steps forward. Zullen we het voorspel maar overslaan? Over mijn lijk. The end! Well, I absolutely adored that, and do you know what? I feel much better about dying, as long as it means I get to f*** Colette. Necrophobia is a film that ticks almost every box for me, being a perfect example of European extreme art house horror, even if it is a bit light on the extreme part. It feels to me like Possession mixed with Necromantic 2 with a dash of Giallo, and if that doesn't sound to you like the perfect recipe for a shameful then I don't think that we should be friends anymore. The story is simple enough with a man losing his wife in an accident then striking up a relationship with a woman in a similar situation. Her only difference is the doctor whose treatment of her past trauma is the digging up and f***ing off dead bodies. This leads to all sorts of madness and while I did enjoy the story, this could so easily have been stretched out to feature length. I don't know if it was a money issue, but keeping the film at an hour severely limits some of the film's more interesting elements for me. A couple examples being the speed at which Mark is able to get over his grief and how much we get to see of how Colette's trauma has affected her. Maybe necrophobia is perfect as it is, but much like your mum's insatiable need for I just wanted more. In terms of the cast, everyone is perfectly fine with no performances standing out as particularly bad. I did enjoy Colette when she went on a murderous turn and the Doctor was a great villain at the end, but nothing about their performances shocked me, if that makes sense. Onto the gore, and if I'm honest, I was worried necrophobia wouldn't deliver. While the shovel killing and the truck kiss were both fine enough, the lack of explicit corpse made me think the level of these opening moments would not be exceeded. Then came Bob's violent demise and the extremely satisfying conclusion, leaving me not rock hard per se, but definitely with enough of a chub to pop it where it needed to go. Production-wise, the film is perfectly fine. The editing and music are good, with the aesthetic being an amalgamation of multiple films I've loved and covered for the channel in the past. There's something about the look of these European horror films from the 80s that Necrophobia adopted in its presentation that I just adore. All in all, I had a really good time with Necrophobia. It combines all the elements of European art house horror that I love while telling its own story, leaving me wanting more at the end. Not only do I wish this film had been feature length, but a sequel following the heavily scarred but somehow still alive Colette would have been great. Maybe mentoring somebody else who's been through a similar trauma? I think I might need to put a pitch together. This is definitely a great addition to my second favourite subgenre and well worth your time, even if we never get to see the inside of Colette's asshole. So that was my review for Necrophobia. What do you lot think? Like I said, when I decided to cover this, I did it solely for the corpse f***ing, but luckily for me, I actually found something that I love, apart from corpse f***ing. And even more exciting, the filmmakers behind this made another horror movie in the mid-2000s that I can't wait to check out. I do wonder why they kept this one under feature length. Just bang in two more death scenes and you would have been golden. Or even just one death scene and then a corpse f***ing scene. At least we went out with Mark losing his entire f***ing balls in a shotgun blast.
Speaking of which, if you want to see Bob doing the I'm being chainsawed to death dance completely uncut and early, head over to patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons. There you can find the uncut version of this review plus others with more stuff being added all the time. We got the uncut reviews, Patreon exclusive reviews, slash a comic breakdowns, the commentaries and the discord. And all that can be yours for as little as $2 a month. You can pledge more, I really appreciate it and do because I'm trying to save up right now to put my first short film into production. I can't think of a production company name though, so if you can think of one, bang it in the comments. And if you want to get your hands on this sicker Serbian film t-shirt make sure to check out unusual horror they've got a sick selection of officially licensed horror merch as well as band collabs and original designs and if you use the promo code jonjo you get 10 percent off your order make your mother regret not getting that abortion by checking out store.unusualhorror.com unusual horror they keep telling me they've never eaten a baby so that's it for another week like the video leave a comment and click subscribe if you haven't already my name's jonjo lyons and i wish this film had an after credit sequence where you're seeing mark's friend getting his back blown out and then as the camera pans round, you see it's actually mark's dog getting all up in his guts you see that's the twist mark's friend is the dog's anyway here's to 2024 and if i can promise you one thing it's just that i'm gonna continue to get worse and worse good night everybody